Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Hasban Allahu wa Nima Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And yet, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. <clears throat> thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Salaamu Alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Wednesday. Yesterday it rained. I'm sure that you will supervise your children with some protective clothing as you step out. It's important that you do. And if you don't live in a, an area that's so safe, we have been told by the Metro Gaza that there's uh, some chance of rainfall this morning. So you have to take your destiny into your own hands. Because in Ghana, at this point, if you don't take care of yourself, the system itself will not take care of you. Now, I know that we have been wondering why there's a family feud between our de facto prime minister and the former chief justice. Six to please put up the screenshot. Uh, so our former chief justice says that Mr. Gabiotri Daku is a disturbance. He called him a disturbance. He says he doesn't decide for me what I need to do or not to do and what I do not need to do. I don't have time for things like that. People like that are not important to me or my life. He is a disturbance. Now, I'm wondering how he feels to be described as a disturbance. Because these are two generations, and some have called it a family feud and said that oh, ordinarily we should not have been involved in this family feud. But there's a question of accountability that has not been answered. And speaking of accountability, recently I had a president admonishing state-owned enterprises bosses right? SOE bosses that they should sit up, especially those of them who are declaring losses. The question I ask is that, is the president now recognizing that there are SOEs that are now declaring losses? Because they have been declaring losses since 19 could you, oh, oh. And you know what's interesting about this government? We have the SIGA, which Mr. Stephen Asamoa Boating, eh? Mr. Stephen Asamoa Boating, he led SIGA in spite of the creation of SIGA with some individuals who go around asking and insulting people who worked at SIGA, we still have state-owned enterprises declaring losses. The last time I checked, the president had told board chairman of uh, state-owned enterprises not to be interfering with the day-to-day -day running of state-owned enterprises. And I said, well, they learned it from the president because in the matter of Daniel Domelovo, when the board chairman of the audit service wrote to the presidency, the president got involved and Domelovo was shown the exit. He goes on leave, his office door locks are changed, the next thing he's been asked to go home. The president got involved together with the board chairman at the audit service. The president got involved. So the question is that the president is now asking SOE bosses to sit up. But what do you expect? I have nothing against old age, as I've always said. And somebody told me that the last time when I said that uh, uh, 7882, the president's age and that of his senior advisor, the number dropped. Today I'm not giving you another number. But I'm told that it, uh, 87, uh, 82 dropped. So if you had done it, a turning number from 78 to 87, you would have won. On this bite, we give goodies here too. But the point I'm making this morning is that the president is aware that some of the SOEs are not performing. They are under declaring. They are declaring losses. And yet they are getting all their largesse. They have their bodyguards. They have their cars. They have their cooks. They have their garden boys. They have the allowances. They have everything intact. Now, in which particular company do you have somebody underperforming? And yet, the person continues to keep on enjoying everything. So, Mr. President, don't tell us that, and don't tell them that they need to set up. I mean, what do you expect when you have a group of old people, largely managing state-owned enterprises? Go and check. State-owned enterprises check of your choice is it georg check you just check a state-owned enterprise check majority of them only old people retirees or people who are older than ghana i have nothing against it i said let the retirees go let the young grow 
If we decide that as a country, we will use these old people as consultants and board chairmen. I will not have any problem. But where they are supposed to be the bosses running the day-to-day -day activities and young people are being told that they cannot have jobs, that's where I have a problem. That is where I have a problem. So, Mr. President, you are aware of the problem. And if there's anarchy in the house and you are not fixing the anarchy, you are not sacking them to bring on fresh blood. Uh, Fred Thompson, uh, what do you call it, uh, Daniel Nikwa, Tech Titus Glover. You have too many bright young people who could run state-owned enterprises for you. But we are not using them. We are not. And you say you have the men. You have the men, you have the men, but the men are not many. You have the men, but the men at this point are not many. Change the men that you have. Yesterday, there's a release from the Bank of Ghana itself. Uh, just, just, please put it up for me. A release from the Bank of Ghana. And as for the Bank of Ghana, there have been issues about printing money. And I know that Adongo has been talking about it since 2019. The Bank of Ghana wrote a statement to refuse it. But IMF, Big Brother IMF is in town. And when Big Brother IMF comes to town, it only means one thing, that they are going to be standing over your shoulder and they will be dictating the pace. The IMF has assigned to Bank of Ghana a resident advisor on financial supervision. Sayo, no lo. Does this question the capability of the governor of Bank of Ghana, Dr. Addison? Does it? That the Bank of Ghana is now being, has now been assigned a resident advisor on financial supervision. It is under this government that we have the Financial Management Act. We also have the Fiscal Discipline Act, right? Sisters, flash them, flash them. We have, we have all the laws. Financial Management Act, we have Fiscal Discipline Act. It was when we decided as a country led by Mr. Keno Foriata at the Finance Ministry that we were going to set aside the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018. From that time, everything has been Nyama, Basa, Chaka, Koto. This act says that we are not going to spend beyond 5%. It's, the, the, the laws are there. We don't have time, but the laws are there. We know what to do. We know what not to do. We know how to spend, what not to spend. It is there, an act of finance to regulate financial management of the public sector within a, a macroeconomic and fiscal framework to define responsibilities of persons entrusted with the management and control. It's there, bluffo. How do we apply it? And I'm saying that since we set it aside, the responsibility, since we set that aside, everything has been haywire. Now, the results of not only nearly 22 billion discovered by the Auditor General, that, that report is also there. And we are getting to know these things because IMF is in town. The man that IMF has appointed to come and give us supervision. Question, did he attend any Ivy League school? Because we are told that our finance minister and some of the experts around him and advising, they went to Ivy League schools, the best of the best. When we were children, we used to watch that uh, Jackie Chan movie, Best of the Best. He said they, they attended the best of the best schools, and they are the best brains to run this. Now they are bringing you a supervisor who did not attend any of those Ivy League schools. So you who went to the best of the best, is now going to be supervised by somebody who didn't attend the best of the best. What does that make you? That a, a, a resident advisor on financial supervision is a serious matter. Because the Bank of Ghana has a division for that. So now if we have to bring somebody, IMF has to now give you somebody, and you acknowledge we have a problem. It means that the men are not many. Do we need to bring in women? Or do we need to change the men? Because the mess we find... Uh -huh, thank you. Six, 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 uh, uh, spread the letter for me. Let us uh, put it up. Appointment of resident advisor of financial supervision, Bank of Ghana. This is it. That's the letter on your screen right now. It says, at the request of the Bank of Ghana, 
and fully funded by the Switzerland State Sec uh, Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO. The International Monetary Fund has assigned a resident advisor in financial sector supervision to Bank of Ghana to provide technical assistance and to assist in building the capacity of the banking supervision function. Does this call into question, Mr. Philip, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Addison's capacity? And all the people at the Bank of Ghana, does this call into question capacity? I'm asking a question. The advisor's placement is a continuation of cooperation between the Bank of Ghana, the IMF and SECO, which commenced in 2015 and has already seen the assignment of previous advisor until 2018. That was when we ended the IMF program. We extended the IMF program a little into 2019. So I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. They leave the thing for you without IMF support. We are back into the ditch again. It's like a child who sees his father driving. says, oh, I can drive, I can drive. Leave it for me, daddy, I can drive. Then they leave the, they leave the stair for him two minutes. He's inside the gutter. That's where we are now. I said, the man who is coming to supervise us at the Bank of Ghana, build our capacity, did not attend the Ivy League school. The people who say mini, 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 who have led us to this point, we will not go to the IMF. We are a proud nation. If we don't go to the IMF, we will crash. The Ivy Leaguers, everybody would want to attend Ivy League. The Ivy Leaguers, who would not listen to anybody, who would not want to answer to anybody, who will see the loss and do the direct opposite. They are the ones now going to be supervised. I'm asking, does this call into question the, the capacity of the people there? Does it call into question Mr. Kenoferata's capacity? And where is Dr. Baumia in all of this? Because the circles of, I am the leader of the economic management team, I am not, and all those talk. Where is the vice president in all of this conversation? I told you that this year, there is no space for geocracy. There will be no space for a homosocracy. There will be no space for a numjacracy. There will be no space for a homosocracy. There will be no space for minimumcracy. There will be only one space for democracy. And democracy, which is funded by us, says that if the people leading us get it wrong, we must call them to order because it is us who take care of their food, their clothes, their vehicle, their security, their accommodation, their everything. When you do that for someone who has said that they want to serve you, they must listen to you. Our government, sadly, is not listening to us. They only hear us. And that is why there's the pain. There's pent up anger in people. May it never, ever, ever blast. Good morning.